Hello, I'm Hartford HealthCare's Rebecca Stewart connecting you to Healthier and welcome to our live Ask the Expert series that we do weekly here on Facebook Live. We're thrilled today to have Dr. Jared Beenick. He joins us from the Tallwood Urology and Kidney Institute. So thank you so much for being with us. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. We've been talking a lot about Movember. If you see a lot of folks walking around looking a little scraggly, Movember <laughs> is to raise awareness for men's health. People grow mustaches and it's to raise awareness for men's health, prostate health, prostate cancer. And it's really a great opportunity to remind men to take care of themselves. Certainly. They're not doing that. So one of the reasons we're here tonight is to ensure that folks remember men have to go see the doctor too. Definitely. Not so good at that. No, no. And if you look at the studies, we are renowned at being bad as a gender as seeing physicians. Uh, we take less advantage of preventative care visits, ER visits. Men are less likely to leave the hospital when they are in the hospital. And as a result, they have shorter life expectancy than women. And another key factor is we engage in more risky behaviors. That's firearms, alcohol, tobacco, other drugs. And, and really all this boils down to we need to see doctors more and we're not. Dr. Vina reminding all of us that to remind the men in our lives, it is time to make sure that we send folks to physicians. We, um, we know that there's some things that are just kind of embarrassing to talk about and mm -hmm. that's another reason we're here because talking about it can be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So what is your advice? Well, I think it's really important that men establish care with somebody that uh, can get them in a comfortable, uh, familiar location, uh, can provide that access to them, not only from the location standpoint, but also the time that they need to discuss maybe these uncomfortable topics. Um, sometimes that may not be the first physician you meet. You might need to meet some other ones um, and make sure you meet physicians in the specialties that you need to be addressing as well. When does someone know, I need to go see a urologist? And then I'm going to start looking at our questions that we're getting because we want to remind you, we are here for you. You have a great opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Beenick. But when do they know? So seeing a urologist, can, it, it can come from a variety of different avenues. Uh, urologists have really specialized in issues of genitourinary health. Mm -hmm. I focus more on men's health issues, things like male infertility, sexual health, testosterone problems, and issues with the prostate, urinary issues. Um, and, and usually referrals are coming from another physician, but often men realize that they have an issue that is addressed by a urologist. Maybe the erections aren't working quite as well as they used to be, or maybe a man and a couple trying to get pregnant isn't succeeding after several months, and, and they really self-refer because they're able to uh, find somebody who can help them with those issues. And that's something actually we were talking about quite a bit, that a lot of times, believe it or not, it's surprising to me that men aren't considered part of the equation if a couple is having trouble conceiving. And you're saying, don't forget about the guy. It's no, absolutely not. And for better or worse, women are often the drivers in those situations. They're the ones seeking care initially. Mm -hmm. uh, men are, tend to be pretty reluctant to have an evaluation, but you're exactly right. Men are half of the equation. It takes two to tango, somebody said. Uh, and so it's important that men have their own evaluation with a history and physical. They need to have Although it's uncomfortable, they need to have some sperm testing, mm -hmm. they need to have some blood work, and from there we can get a general picture about their fertility status and may take them down different avenues that are important in, in really achieving what they want, which is a pregnancy and, and a child. And you have a class coming up, something mm -hmm. called Peyronie's disease. A lot of folks don't know what that is. It's coming mm -hmm. up November 30th. Tell us about that community education event. So let me introduce Peyronie's disease first because it's kind of an abstract idea. In fact, I saw one gentleman who told me he didn't even realize he had a disease until he had heard from somebody else. So Peyronie's disease is when there's a scar that forms on the penis and that can limit its ability to expand and can affect the quality and the shape of the erections. Often it's known as curvature of the erections. Uh, but there's a lot of treatments available um, and as well as an FDA approved injectable medication which was approved in 2013. Uh, and we're going to be talking about those at our community education event as well as the, the history of Peyronie's disease and what men can expect, how it may be impacting their lives uh, coming up on November 30th. Are you surprised when people come to you and do, is there a sense that I can finally unload and unleash and talk about this? Certainly, certainly. Uh, there are a lot of men who have been struggling with these issues, resigned to living the way they are with whatever problem they're suffering with. Often these are the uncomfortable things which you're mentioning, which are inability to father children, uh, erectile dysfunction. I've had men crying in my office when I've given them treatments that they've been able to restore their sexual quality of life. 
which some men for, take for granted. And a lot of men say, it's not necessary in my relationship. But again, studies have shown that it's generally important and men have a better quality of life and better overall mood and sense of well-being when they're able to engage in those activities that they want to. That's so important. And if we sort of switch gears somewhat dramatically, the other thing that you often do, you uh, take part in a lot of vasectomies. Mm -hmm. And um, what I find really fascinating is reversing that mm -hmm. vasectomy mm -hmm. so that someone can have a mm -hmm. child maybe later in life or after in a second marriage. Mm -hmm. Take us through that process. So the reversal is a little bit different than the vasectomy itself. The vasectomy is a very easy office procedure done in 15 to 20 minutes. The reversal, now putting it back together, takes a little bit more time. Most people do it in a hospital setting uh, on an outpatient surgical basis. And what we're doing is reconstructing that vas deferens around the previous scar, usually a vas to vas connection to reestablish the piping, the plumbing, mm -hmm. I'm a glorified plumber is what I say, <laughs> uh, so that the sperm can travel through the pipes again. Uh, and it really has high success rates with up to 90% of men being able to have sperm in the ejaculate again. And it's, it's proved to be very cost effective when compared to other treatments. And then folks go on to have families. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. pretty amazing. Yeah. When you are talking to folks, what do you find are the questions that they bring to you? When you're at the community ed education events, what, what's something that comes up over and over again? Well, I think at the community education events, you know, men first and foremost want to hear about what the condition is, what's going on in their body. Mm -hmm. Is it something that they're doing or is it something else that they're taking? Is there something else they can do in their activity and diet? And that's the first thing I advocate for essentially all men that are struggling with any of those fertility problems, sexual dysfunction, testosterone issues. Studies have shown across all those problems that a healthy diet and lifestyle, including weight-bearing exercise, improves testosterone, improves a lot of those factors. So that's certainly important. And then they want to know about the spectrum of treatment options. Everything we've talked about already has a spectrum of treatment options. And each man falls in a different level, different area in that spectrum. And so that's where we really get down to the nitty gritty of figuring out where does each man fall. And you've often talked about the idea that one of these symptoms is actually and could be the canary in the coal mine. Mm -hmm. There is some evidence that it's actually a symptom of something else that you need to look into. Right. That's, that's been you know, the subject of a lot of research recently in men's health. A lot of men's health concerns, rather than focusing on the individual problem, mm -hmm. we need to focus on the overall men's health picture. Uh, for example, erectile dysfunction we've talked about already is often due to insufficiencies in the blood vessels in the penis. Now, the blood vessels in the penis are a little bit smaller than other blood vessels in the body, for example, the heart. So often it has been linked to a warning sign for possible cardiovascular disease. So I'm definitely on top of the men I see to say, is your cholesterol okay? Is your blood pressure okay? Has anybody checked your blood sugars recently? Those are all things that weigh into the cardiovascular risk factors as well. And there's men that will even refer to a cardiologist if I think they need it. And that is that sort of intricate web of the fact that all health does relate. And mm -hmm. that's something that you said you're really passionate about that you see happening more in women's health, mm -hmm. but men's health has been slow to adopt. Right, certainly those multidisciplinary collaborations where I can easily access a cardiologist, for example, and talk to them about patients I'm concerned about, or an endocrinologist and somebody who has hormonal problems that's causing their infertility that I need to work with uh, to, to really work on getting that couple pregnant. Those are collaborations which we're working to develop at Hartford HealthCare to make it easier for men to access this care uh, across the system, but also in comfortable, familiar locations for them. Which is so important. And again, really reminding folks that these are tough to talk about, but it's important, and we want folks to be comfortable yep. to have those conversations. Dr. Jared Beenick, thank you so much for joining us with thank the Talwood Urology and Kidney Institute. Again, there is a class coming up, speaking about Peyronie's disease. Mm -hmm. That is November 30th in Windsor, and you can always call 855-HHC here, and that number should be on your screen. Thank you so much for taking part, and we thank you for watching.